I'm gonna show you seven different ways to design the Scatus hook so that it doesn't break whenever you 3D print it. Okay, so these little hooks are super handy because you can create all kinds of organizer walls and you get panels like this, set them up on your wall and then you can start putting up whatever you want. These things just insert into there and then they slide straight on and now you can set up a whole wall of these things to organize your tools, your gadgets, your home crafts, whatever it happens to be. But like I said, the challenge is these hooks are really, really tough to get 3D printed reliably because they want to snap off. If you print it like this, it's gonna snap off right there. If you print it like this, that tongue is gonna snap off right there. So how do you get these done? Well, there's a few tricks that can be used. The very first and most obvious one is to take whatever you're trying to print and instead of having all the hooks printed the way the thing is gonna sit on there, is to set it all sideways. But now you have generated support falling up underneath the hooks, which can mess with the overall tolerance of the hooks. And when you try to press this into there, the hooks can get a little bit wider, so they can be tougher to pan into the board. Also, the support can get knocked off, especially if you're using auto-generated support. Because if you have a bunch of these hooks or a bunch of variations of it all, this support right here might be that long, and now it doesn't really very reliably hold up to that hook. It might get knocked off during the print process. So while this does make the hook strong, because they're in plane with the layers, this doesn't really work very well because you have to have all this additional support. Now you can get around the need for support by using designed supports because now it is exactly where you need it and it's fully independent of the slicer. And that's really important because you don't want auto-generated supports when you can avoid them. Because if you can use design supports, it saves cost on printing, it's more reliable, and this support could be eight inches long and you could put small support sprues in there in order to make sure that it's kind of a part of the part and it can't fall over and slop away the way generated supports can. So this designing supports can be a really good way to, again, get the strength in the hooks that you want, but still have everything break away the way you intended. Design supports are also just more reliable because, again, since you're not dependent on the slicer, you know that the spacing can be super consistent, so the hooks will be a lot more crisp than with generated supports. Something else you can do if for some reason you can't print the part on its side, printing this on the side would be a little bit tough. You can actually move the hooks so that they are flush with the side. On this dish, they're not flush. You actually have this gap right here, so support would have to build up underneath this hook and you want to avoid that. But it's very simple with a 3D printed part to just make sure that the hooks are flush straight there on the bottom of the part. That way you're printing on the bed, everything is as strong as it can be, you don't have any support. But again, you have this issue of these tabs wanting to break off. But in order to get around that, people don't realize that even though this is this traditional Scatus hook design, this is not the hook that you have to use. You just need something that can fit through these slots. And in order to get to that, that means you can adjust stuff. These break off because they're long and thin. So why not just make them short and stumpy? Here, what you can do is you still have the exact same fit that will press right into there and then still slide down and still won't fall out in any sort of way, but it just doesn't engage quite as heavily as these do. But that's okay because you don't need them to. That little lip is enough to hold in there very reliably. And now you have a really simple design that can be printed like this, has no support anywhere. The little stumps are strong enough that they will never tear out of there regardless of what you're holding in. We can make this thing a foot long out to here with a wrench inside of there, they still won't tear off. And if you really, really wanted to, you could technically make these back nubs longer so that that nub gets beefier and beefier and has more and more material to hold on to. So if you wanted to, you could just stretch that out. Now you might hit a wall, so that could be an issue. But again, the hooks don't have to be the design of the original hooks. You can adjust them. And this is a really simple way to make them stumpier and make them stronger without doing anything really wild and crazy. But before I get to the really weird stuff, let's go ahead and talk about Portals. Portals is a new app that we built that allows allows anybody to just upload a model and instantly have a 3D print for sale. When somebody orders it from you, it is printed and shipped directly to them on your behalf using Slant3D's giant 3D print farms. And it's such a fantastic resource for designers, but it's important that designers know how to optimize their designs to make sure the customer always gets what they want. In order to design something that's really reliable and a product that's really good always, you wanna make sure that it's independent of the material, the printer, or the print settings. So designing tricks like this are terribly useful so that you aren't dependent on how support is generated or those kind of things. You just get a part that will print always on any machine and will always look fantastic. So if you want to try out portals to start growing your own 3D printing business completely on the side without having to deal with support, packing, shipping, or running your own print farm, go ahead and check out portals over on slantpod.com. Okay, so we've run through a couple of basic tricks to get these hooks moved to a place and kind of redesigned so that they're good. But what if you do need a hook like this that's sitting on its side that is inset from it all? Like there's no way that you can move this around or do anything differently with these hooks, but you still need that feature. Well, now you're dealing with overhangs, but you don't want support if you can avoid it. You really want to avoid support. 
So how do you maintain the strength, avoid support, and put the hook wherever you want to? Well, you don't actually use the hook. You can actually start using compliant features. And one of the simplest compliant features are just a simple little snap. These snaps are fantastic because the trick to them is, is that they're not actually flat. They are actually chamfered. So it's printed like this so that you have no support underneath it. It is still the size of the standard SCADA slot, but now you have two compliant tabs to where you can take this shove it in there and it locks in now just a little bit to where it's still easy enough to pull out but it can still lock in and you can make those tabs bigger and chunkier however you want to now there is a danger with these types of compliant features because rather than having a fat chunky part right here you end up with these really thin features that can have sort of sagging issues if you don't set them at the right angle right here this is right on the edge of being too steep because you're going to have overhang issues and it's a really thin wall in order to keep the compliance so there can be a lot of dangers there around print quality and literally Literally just changing the color of the filament may change this from sagging to not. So make sure that chamfer is as shallow as you possibly can. I took it straight to the edge here so that you could see what could happen, but these compliant features can be super useful. And again, that center gap, I can technically make the tabs on the outside half the length of that center gap. And that's the maximum size you can make and still have it snap in and hold there just fine without anything terribly weird going on, especially if you have easy things. And then you can still pop it back out. But this compliant feature doesn't give you a lot of strength because they are just bending right there. They can snap off. Maybe you want more play in it so that you can get a bigger grip onto that board. One other really cool one that you can use is not actually one that's two separate tabs, but one that is one single loop. This single loop is fantastic because you have all the lock-in again, and it's a lot tighter. But now the danger with the loop is, is that you have, don't have a lot of flex. Here is a dirty little secret. This loop does not attach at this outer wall. It attaches almost a centimeter inside of this block, several millimeters. What this does is it makes the arms of this loop longer so they become more flexible. Because if you have something that's this long and you try to flex it, it's gonna be really stiff. But if you make it longer, it starts to flex really easily. Think of a short piece of grass or a big old long stalk of wheat. The wheat bends more easily because it just has more material to flex. So what I did is I cut this cavity around this thing so that its fins have more room to flex and now you don't have to worry about the rigidity. Because if I made this loop, attached it the way this one is, it wouldn't flex enough and would be really tough to put on and to pull off. But by doing this, it has enough room to flex. It can still pull in and compress, but you don't have to worry about fatigue or cracking right there at the edge, it's a really useful way to do it. You can apply this cavity technique to these if you want to in order to make them thicker and make them stiffer, but it's just a nifty trick in that 3D printing allows you to create geometries that you otherwise couldn't ever create to create functionality that you otherwise wouldn't ever use. So this loop, has a nice compressed single loop of material, this one single strand all the way around. It is long enough from the indent to actually hold up, and it's just a really nifty way of connecting it up because it also guides itself in there without having anything that can really snap off. It is possible that one of these tongues could someday snap off if somebody drops it or anything else, but this will basically never snap off. Again though, it is really important to be aware of your overhangs because this right here, again, it's a really thin batch of material. It's a super thin, basically one strand, maybe two if you really want to stretch it. I recommend going about a half a millimeter to one millimeter thick on these types of loops. But when it's that thin, you can have these overhangs that can start to sag. So again, you want to make this just as shallow as possible as, or as vertical as possible, this lower edge while still maintaining the dimensions that you need. And that way you will get something that is really crisp and totally independent of slicer settings. And also just really strong. This is never going to snap off outside of somebody taking a pair of pliers and twisting it off, which is as true of a stand plastic part as it is of a 3D printed part. But there's one more way to make the Scatus mount, which is absolutely perfect and will never break and you never have to deal with plastic parts. Sometimes plastic hooks just are not strong enough and you need something beefy. It'd be really nice if you could get a metal hook that holds on there just like anything else. And these hooks pretty much aren't ever going to break. But you can't include these with 3D prints and certainly not on something like portals, but you can. On portals, we allow third party parts and we actually have these hooks in included to where you can upload a model and then you can add in the hook so that anytime somebody orders it, the model and the hook are shipped along with it. So now you can include a metal hook with your design, which was never possible before. So you can actually have it as strong as you've ever wanted. So you're not restricted by the strength of plastic hooks. So you can design in these loops into your parts if you have that much room in it, but that way you can have the hooks be the primary mounting point on the Scatus board, but then you can create whatever you want that integrates with these hooks. So you no longer are restricted by 
the slots, you are restricted by the metal hook. So hopefully this was helpful to you and showing you there are many different ways of skinning any given cat. So you can design all kinds of solutions in order to make something mount up to this board because you are not limited by the geometry. You don't have to make a hook like this. You're using 3D printing. You have a lot of options. You can modify this hook, move this hook, redesign this hook, or create not a hook at all, or even just go ahead and add in something else that was never able to be added in before and still make a product that is really amazing that your customers will love and can be made on any machine, anytime, anywhere in the world so that you can go from making one model to selling millions of the parts overnight without having to worry about your design, having some weird cases where it just snaps off because you just made a 3D printed version of the old style. You can do new stuff, and it's always exciting to see what everybody creates, and I can't wait to see what you make. Have a great day, everybody.